worked on his years of experience, he could do them within 10 minutes. So the money is coming based on the number of things that he has been able to acquire. So as much as, much as you have big vision for yourself, you also need to know that you need to start small. Then the second question is that what will not take your time? Well, for me, my personal opinion, I don't think there's anything you want to do that you will not devote your time into. It is not easy. It will not be easy. But on the long run, it's going to be really profitable. So if you are looking at what will not take your time, then I think it's better you just focus on nothing alone. And then you'll be fine because there's nothing you can do that will not take your time. That's my own um, opinion. Also, to add to what she said. Okay, I don't think there is nothing that will not take your time. Let me just be frank with you. There is nothing because um, I just want you to know that you can maximize your time. It's about how you can maximize your time. The truth is that you are saying you, you don't have time. If we can combine the time, we sit with our phones, we check our Instagram, our TikTok, all these things. It is something that you can use with your, you can use those times to do something better. Even with your academics, if you feel like you don't want to put your time in it, you can be you can be excellent in it. For everything you want to do, you have to put your time with it and be diligent with it. So for everything you want to do, time is needed, but it depends on how you can maximize that time. And it still depends on what we are talking about, maximizing your talents and opportunities. All right. Um, still on that question. I'm a student, so I can relate with the question. And um, what I would say is, I would not give you business ideas. So you know, say it's not worried that led you into. <laughs> By the help of the Holy Spirit, I, I don't want to. I don't want us to feel like it's a religious thing, but sometimes we most times underestimate the power of what the Holy Spirit can help us and guide us into doing. Don't do something that is outside of your space. My design started from me looking for something still within my space where I am not too extroverted and I still, I'm still within my space. So there is every business opportunity still for your personality and your level. But if it is talking about what will not take your time, like they have said, why did they say time is money? It's because you exchange money for your time. I am not just... When I charge, I'm not just charging for skill. I charge that I have spent 30 hours for you. So time is money is that you exchange your time to get money. That is it. If you're looking for what will not take your time, it is a lie. You will start to have, you need to start to cut your sleep time, cut those extra talks and all of that just to be productive. To get wealth, you will commit your funds and you will commit your time. And if you're not ready to do that, don't, if you are ready, it will take those part of you. It will take your health self sometimes. It will, it will stretch you. And um, she's talking about um, doing what is, you know, doing a business and all of that. Start from what you have. See, even if you know how to write, it doesn't mean that you will end from writing. Sometimes we feel that passion is everything. No. If your passion is not backed up with knowledge of how to earn from that thing, you would not earn from it. You only be a professor. You only have knowledge of how to write and how to format, how to use catchy editing and all of that. But if you don't know the business of that, your skill, you still won't earn it. You still won't earn out of it. And that will require that you learn the business of your skill. You learn the business of design. You learn the business of online marketing. You learn the business of importation and exportation. Learn the business of nursing. And sorry, that will take your time too. Thank you very much, ma'am. Ma All right, thank you. Um, I think that question has been answered already. So to the next question, please, whoever is answering this question, please, one minute. Thank you. So I'm reading verbatim. Thank you for all you've said. In my school, I noticed that people love to buy on credit. I started selling snacks at some point. I'm feeling this person's pain already. But I had to stop because of the debt. Now, I have an insight to sell biro and soap. But I am scared of debt. Also, I am a writer. But I am scared to monetize. To monetize it. 
even though a lot of people have seen my works and encouraged me to monetize it. There is also the problem of a bad phone hmm. and no laptop. How do I go about it? Praise God. Okay. Um, the, the first business I ventured into while I was in school was selling of granite. So I was making it myself. Like I'll buy the raw granite, soak it, dry it. Is it fry now? I will, I will roast. I will pack it and sell. Amen. So going through that stress, going through that stress, you can't even come and tell me that you want to buy on credit. Amen. And if you are buying on credit, there's a clause. If you don't pay within so so range, there's an interest. Hallelujah. So you have to make it known to them that you are not for credit. And the truth is, they will talk about you in a bad way. They will go, your customer will still come. Your customer will come. That's the truth. Okay, then to the part of content, is it content creation or copywriting or writing? And you are scared to start billing people. Hallelujah. When I first of all started as a graphic designer, I was scared to build people. And it, it boils down to, to this, which is value. You have to see the value that you are communicating to people. Once you are convinced of the value that you are communicating, then you'll not be scared to build. But once you feel your work can be replicated by a common or someone else without stress, then you feel like you can't monetize it. But when you start seeing your work as something that is special, unique to your own personality, then you'll not be scared to build people. Even if it's as low as 2K. It starts from somewhere. I started graphic design as 2K. Increase to 4K, 5K, 10K. Now I do fly out for 15K. If you come to my DM, you tell me you cannot afford me. I appreciate you. Bye-bye. You cannot sell to everybody. But this is the journey. You have to ensure that you're actually giving out value. It is when you're not convinced of the value that you're giving out. That is when you'll be scared to build. So work on yourself. Become a person of value. Be sure of what you're doing. And convince yourself that you're a person of value. Amen. <laughs> the first time I called 15K for a flyer, I almost shook. Like, my heart skipped a bit. Like, 15K, flyer. <laughs> Amen. But this is the truth. If you don't work on yourself, you will not see the value what you are selling. So you have to keep telling yourself, you have to stand behind the mirror every morning. And tell it to yourself that you are giving out value. I'm a person of value. Tell it to yourself. You have to see it before people start seeing it in you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, the first question says she was she ran into debt. Okay, let me start by saying that for my own kind of person, even before I started that business, I already had a fear. Because my own kind of person, I can give my last card. And I'm always so pity. Like when people say little things, I'm always moved. So, but one thing I want to let you know is that for whatever you are selling, for anything you are doing, you have to be firm. You have to, um, and that is where we have to learn managing our emotions, our, um, this is business. When you're talking about business, it is different from your own personality. Yes, you are in a, in a school environment, but when people know who you for who you are, they will not take you for granted. It's because we have been doing it and people see it as a privilege and they can take you for who you are. I don't think I want, I want to sell anything to someone and the person will not pay me and I'll give the person a, the, the person's goods. Before you get your goods, you have to pay me in full. If you're paying as in you pay half, that means the goods will still be with me. If you pay half, the goods is, with, is still with me. If you do not pay the half, I will sell it out. And the money is still with me. I'm not going to refund you. So it's your own loss. Yes, it's your own loss. So I will tell you before telling me that, okay, you want to buy something and you don't have the full money. It's not a problem. You can pay 50%. The thing is still with me. I have my money. But after so many times you have not paying, I'm going to sell that goods. And I'm still going to have my 50%. And I'm still going to have another 100%. So you're the one that will lose. So with that, it gives people the consciousness of the ones to collect their goods after paying 
um like 50 percent of what they are but so that's what i'm trying to say is that just ensure you know have principle for your business have rules that guide your business don't be so compliant that you can just do anyhow have principles this is what i'm not going to it's not only about money there are some businesses that will enhance that you have your principles that you want to do so when you know that this business i'm venturing people know you for who you are you not give out debts so be stressed with whatever you are doing thank you okay so um they already answered um the first question i think in the best way possible um i understand that if you are selling something in the hostel i know how it can be so i empathize with that person it can be somehow but as they said they start from who you are first of all if be as firm as possible as a person then you'll be able to communicate that to the people that are coming. Then for the second question, um, I I think in my story, I said that that I lacked the confidence. But in addition to what um, Nosmami to said, one other thing that helped me was that I had to sit down within myself and think about it. What is making me um, think of myself in this way? Why don't I have the confidence to say I want to make a dress for someone and it's going to come out well on the person? So I started searching and then from my search, I realized that, okay, I see I have shortcomings in certain areas. So I went to pursue more knowledge. As much as I had a background knowledge, I needed to pursue that. So after that, <laughs> there's nothing anybody could have told me that could uh, make me um, belittle myself or think of myself in a in a small manner. So aside from you, aside from you building your confidence, another way to work on that is that acquire more knowledge. Acquire more knowledge. Try to sign up for more courses, things that can open your eyes better to how you can actually monetize and then charge your skill. For what you're doing okay all right um in addition to what everyone i said i said um i've noticed that our problem is we want to bring emotions into money like she said don't be emotional about money when it's business uh -huh. and so what am i said to me uh -huh. you will pay you go to dubai and say ma please give me plantain and when i go and eat it i come back i'll give you money so when it's because it's in the hostel now, you, you want the same block, you want to come and collect this on credit. No. Once you start letting people know that this is business, oh, it's fine, I want to help you. But just, just let them know the standards also that you have around your business. And then um, for the person who is scared of starting or earning from your skill as a writer, sit back to discover what you truly have. Do you really know what you have? Like... You can write and somebody gets so emotional. You can write a book. You are dead. You died. We are still reading the books of some people that they wrote and you are still feeling the presence. You read Kenneth Degin's book and you're like, that's literally what you carry. That's literally the kind of assignments God has placed in you. Do you really know what you carry? Will you be scared of writing if you know that this thing has a generational problem to solve? So get back to discover what you have. If you need to reach out to people who fail you, push you, direct you, that's not out of the game at all. And then for you wanting to write content, but your phone is spoiled, blah, blah, blah. There is no excuse or that is it. If that skill, if you are sure that, like Pastor Lawrence would say, that if you were asked to stand for 12 hours to pray, and the next morning, just because you stand, they will reward you $1 million. That pain you said you have in your leg, are you going to still use it as an excuse? Your phone has spots. We use it as an excuse to learn the skill that you are sure we give you so, 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 and so amount. So know the consequences of what you learn and what you will gain and ask yourself, does it what it? me pain and extra sacrifice to ask my friend and say, please, just give me so, so, and so time in your day. Let me just write. I don't want to write on Google Doc. I'm not uploading anything. Let me just borrow something. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much, Ma. Thank you very much. Can we give a round of applause to our panelists? So we have two more questions here, but we'll be taking just one. I will read out the two questions, but we'll take just one. But before we take that, I would like to emphasize something that um, Bramamidu was talking about. Don't be scared to name your price as long as you know the value for the price. 
You know, I was able to understand this very recently this year. I was very close to applying for a mentorship program, a six-month mentorship program. I was very, very close. It's a program that is worth, guess how much? With discount, 3.8 million. Mm. I said I was very close. Very, very close. Only one thing that I mean. I did not have the 3.8 million era. I'm serious. At some point, I was so agitating. In fact, I had to apply for a scholarship. I was given the scholarship. At the end of the day, so I should pay 1.5. I did not have the 1.5. But then I now sat down and asked myself, wait. So if I have 1.5 million euro now, <laughs> I want to apply for a mentorship program. But I knew, I, I now began to realize that it was something I was willing to do, even though I didn't have the money, because I knew there was a value attached to it. And the person was ready to, she was unapologetic about mentioning the price for, ment for the mentorship program because she knows the value that she was going to give. Give value. See, you know, there's actually a paradox in business that we don't know. Many times people think because it's cheap, people will buy it. But the paradox of, of business is that when it is too cheap, people will not buy it because people believe that when it is too cheap, it is not worth it. Why is it that people flaunt when they buy I don't know a lot about brands, but maybe if they buy a Gucci bag, maybe say like 70,000, why are they, why do they want to flaunt that I bought this bag for 70,000 euro? See, even if that bag might not be as quality as the one you buy, 2,000 euro, you will not want to stand because you believe that attached to that money is a quality, a value. When it is too cheap, people will not buy it. Name your price. Don't be apologetic about it. If it is worth the value of 5,000 naira, and other people are selling it from Wi-Fi, say it is 5,000 naira. People that understand value will buy it. You are not selling money. You are selling value. Then the second thing I want to mention is don't be scared. As an entrepreneur, don't be scared to make mistakes. Yes, I know we've been seeing a lot of things. They've been telling you how it has been rosy and all and all. If, as many there's time, I know they will tell you a lot of mistakes they've made as entrepreneurs. Times when they've invested into the wrong thing or they've bought the wrong good or they invested with the wrong investor. I mean, there are a lot of mistakes you will make. But at the end of this day, you will realize that this mistake will become a value to you, will become profitable to you because it will add to your wealth of knowledge with which you can be able to teach others that these were the things I was able to learn. You will not just teach them how to do it, but you will also teach them how not to do it. Amen. I'll read the two questions, but we'll answer one, then we'll round up. 30 seconds. Finalists, please. Please, thank you. So I'll read the first question that we will not answer and I will tell you why we will not answer the question. So the question is, how can one monetize, uh, maximize um, your writing skills such that it translates into earning me money? We are not going to answer this question. Number one, what kind of writing skill? There are different kinds of writing. We have poetry, copywriting, ghostwriting, article, educational writing, uh, fictions, non-fictions. There are several kinds of writing. So we need to know what kind of writing. And we need to know the level in which you already know. It is not just a question that we can answer. It's a question which you need to meet someone who is a writer. However, if you still want to meet, you can actually meet any of our panelists. Whatever they know, or they can refer you to someone who is a writer that can help with this. So the next question, last question, 30 seconds. I'm an entrepreneur and there are times which I just feel like giving up and there are times that people won't patronize me though I'm a shy person and don't really like approaching people and I even find it hard to post sometimes what do I do? Okay, um... For someone who has worked in this person's shoes and is presently working in it and sometimes works in it, I can actually empathize with that person. The truth is you will not always feel like showing up. I'm taking it from behind to the front now. You will not always feel like showing up. You will not feel like posting. 
you will not even feel like missing people are telling people about what you do. Let me try to share an, a, 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 my experience so that I can make it as practical as possible. So I think today is Saturday. On Sunday, I said I wanted to visit certain hospitals just to pitch the brand to them, certain hospitals in Ibadan. Sunday, I posted it. Okay, I will go on Monday. Of course, I know that I have a nursing job. I think I was on money duty on Monday. I still say I will go on Monday. How will I go? I couldn't go then. On Tuesday, I think I was on night duty. I said I will go on Tuesday. I thought about it. Ah, Tuesday, I will go for night duty. If I go to these hospitals, before I get back, I'm tired already. I will go on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I decided to go. I'm just trying to let you understand that it's not like... um. Is one very, very strong superhuman that does these, these things. So I went on Wednesday, but I, I wanted to, I think out of 10 hospitals, I was only able to do like four or five at a point. I'm like, ah, this one that you have done, you to be going home. There are days that I would say it's 10 hospitals I want to go to. I will be able to do 15. So I'm just trying to let you understand that you will not feel like doing what you are supposed to do. But one thing that keeps driving me is the fact that why did you start? Is God involved in this? If God is involved, you are a steward of these resources he has placed in your hands. And you will give account for them as much as you are getting money from it. Business is not just you buying and selling. Business is you reaching the unreached. Not with the usual gospel of give your life to Jesus. Even with your character, the way you relate with people is, a, is an aspect of it. So you will not always feel like showing up, but you just need to look back into what motivated you to start in the first place. And also look at the fact that you're going to give account of these things and then the advantage these things can do for you. Then I think the first question was talking about, okay, let the next person answer the question. Um, nothing to differ from what she said is um, identifying your strong why. It has to be strong enough. You won't always feel like doing it, but what would help you to post and reach out even when you are not feeling like doing it because you are seeing the consequences of your inactions. Some of us, our family problem is enough to even chase us to do plenty of things. Like, it's true. The problem you have at home, nobody is doing business, nobody is generating any money. I just look back, worry, say you don't have sense. It's enough to push me and say, who well, better post you? Why? People would not buy because they don't know you. I've said it before. That's why you need to keep being in the front of your audience they won't buy because they don't trust you they don't trust you they don't know you by just posting once you have to do this thing constantly you wear your brand it is your clothes they see you they know you're a designer because you will not see any of that thing on my status like that is different so you will do it please you will do it irrespective go back and find a strong why attach it Cram it, master it in your head. Always tell yourself when you are tired. Abby, I think not times that we are we don't feel like reading, but exam is coming. You cannot afford to fail. You would have to read in sickness and in health. You will do yeah. TDB. So get a strong why, and it would solve a lot of our problems. Okay, praise God. I just want to add to what you have said. What I want to add is that build consistency for your brand. If you have built consistency, sincerely, you may not even, when you get to some stage, you don't even need to post. People already know you for who you are. There are some brands that they already make them for themselves. It's not until they start posting every day, come and buy this. People already know them. I was saying it to um, Nozmanula that v Vicky James, I, I know many of us know Vicky James. She, she organized one class, I think recently, and she charged one million just for 30 days. And I tell you, people from outside the country came for that class. And people were abusing her on Instagram that why, why is she charging that much? And she called herself a Christian and all and all. They really dragged her. I mean, they really dragged her. But that one, she did not even care. She not send anybody's papa. Because she has built a level of consistency for herself. Before she can get to that stage, it has costed her so many things. And she's a, she said she's a Christian. We are dragging her, she's a Christian. If she gets to church and she did not give her own contribution to church, wouldn't they abuse her? Ah, Vicky James, you are not doing this. So it's not about you being a Christian. That does not mean you should not um, portray yourself in a valuable way. Yes, 
you should still process yourself in a valuable way. And that's what I'm trying to say. Make yourself beautiful. Like, I don't know, brand yourself in a beautiful way so that people can know that even when they're not posting, they can always come back. Amen. Sorry, before you, um, before you come in, I want to actually emphasize something. You know, she was mentioning that um, they were dragging her that, and she's a Christian. Understand that there is a difference between a ministry and a business. I'm a music minister and I'm an entrepreneur. God has given me this ministry. Of course, I'm using, utilizing my talents now, not, to, for, not for monetary value, but to reach out to people. But I'm an entrepreneur, doing fashion designer. I said, because I'm a Christian, I should not charge you. I cannot do it. As soon as I was able to do the mentorship class, now maybe of that 3.8 million era, and I was able to gain something. Now I want to call a mentorship class. Now I should call for 10,000 era. Really? It's okay. Amen. Uh, actually, the first thing I would say is, personally, I'm an introvert, right? And I can be shy. Praise God. So, but one thing I would say is, association can actually help you go a long way. Association. And let me just read something that I have in my notes here. He said, what class begins where your comfort zone ends? Amen. As long as you keep telling yourself that you're an introvert, you're shy, you cannot go out there and post, you cannot advertise your business. I'm sorry, there'll be no money in your back account. Praise God. Now, another thing I want to say again is you have to look at the consequences of your action. So when you look at the consequences of your action, then you'll be able to make a decision. Because somebody sold the idea to you that you're an introvert, and introverts don't talk. Introverts are shy. Why not you modify your own introvert and start talking? Amen. <laughs> now, <laughs> another thing I will say again is book is to the mind as exercise is to the body. So get books that can help you know how to portray yourself, how to sell, how to advertise, how to sell even without talking, how to sell without people seeing your face. Amen. Thank you. Much. Thank you very much, sir. So we are, we are rounding up already, but I just want to emphasize a few things very, very quickly. I know in some people's mind already are like, hey, so many wisdom. Where do I start from? Maybe I should go and open Indomie shop. Maybe I should go and start, I should go and start sewing clothes. I know how to make it. Let me start plating it. I would first say, say, calm down. Tell yourself, calm down. I know there is a surge of 